hello everyone welcome to my channel and today i am going to tell you about how to choose your next smartphone wisely so purchasing a new smartphone is a tricky situation we have to consider many things before we go and buy one because smartphones are like a major part of our lives now you really don't want to regret your decision after buying it because you have to use it every single day for years to come but it's very difficult to suggest a smartphone because people are different and they want different things from their devices so I'm going to go through some critical things to consider when buying a new smartphone and then you can think for yourself what matters to me the most from a smartphone and you can come up with a good decision. Okay before we get into that please hit the like button for this video it really helps me to keep doing these videos. Okay first thing you need to consider about is the price range. This is the first thing you need to figure out when buying a new smartphone. If you have enough money to spend on a high-end smartphone then no problem, you have many choices and you can buy the latest and greatest. But if you are a person who is thinking about getting the most value out of your money, uh, then you have to set a price range. So how much you are willing to pay for a smartphone? The smartphone market is a very competitive place and there are lots of great deals out there. But you really don't have to spend a fortune to buy a piece of tech that outdates so quickly after the next big thing. You want some suggestions? <laughs> if you want to save your money and buy a decent smartphone, check this video out. I talked about the best budget smartphones in the market in a previous video and see whether it helps you to set your budget. And finally, always be mindful about your expenses and try to figure out what matters to you. Okay, the next thing you need to figure out is what operating system you want. For many people, this factor is so critical. We have two operating systems, you know, it's iOS and Android. Some prefer iOS, either they caught in the Apple ecosystem, uh, such as iMessages, and even they can have iMessage group chats, or they simply want that blue bubble. And these iPhones have FaceTime, and other Apple devices work flawlessly with iPhones. So simply, iOS is secure, clean, professional, more refined, easy to use, but it limits customization. And it's kind of expensive. On the other hand, Android is much cheaper, more customizable, has many choices to choose from, but Android phones cannot keep the value like uh, iPhones if you're looking forward to selling it after some time. Next one is display. Choosing the right display is very important because it's a component you always interact with. Okay, so when considering display panels, mainly we have to consider about three things. Display size, display technology, and protection of the panel. Okay, display size. It's 2020 and I'm like, could the screens be any more bigger? Could I be more sorry? It's crazy how the smartphone screens are getting bigger and bigger every year and still people are getting used to that. When considering display size, you should really understand whether you are a small screen person or a large screen person. Otherwise, you will never get the true satisfaction of your phone. So let's talk about big screens. Big screens have pros like you can watch content from your phone without any problem since the phone is bigger and most of the time battery capacity is also bigger. Scrolling through social media is easier because it shows a huge portion of content on the screen at once. But the problem is, it's harder to carry around, sometimes it's not pocketable and using it one handed is very difficult. Ok, small screens. Pros are, it's compact. Easy to use, easier to carry around, but the problem is most of the time battery capacity is lower because it's a small phone. Just think about compact phones like iPhone SE 2020, Samsung Galaxy S10e, Pixel 3. These phones have very average battery life compared to other big smartphones. And also if you're going to watch content on your phone, small screens are not the way to go. More importantly, you have to consider your palm size. If you have a small palm, you are not gonna enjoy using a smartphone with a huge display. Likewise, you have to figure out what's the ideal display size for you. Okay, next up is display technology. Uh, when we consider the display technologies, the main two types are LCDs and OLED panels. Simply, OLED panels are much vibrant, has true blacks, and it's bright, have better weaving angles, and they use less battery but they tend to burn after a while. You can search screen burning issues and find more about it. On the other hand, LCDs also have a good color accuracy. It's cheaper and durable, but they consume more power compared to OLED panels and it's less vibrant. And there's a promotion display pattern in this year and it will continue. Our normal screens have 60Hz refresh rate, but now we have 90Hz 
120 hertz and even 144 hertz the thing is if you can jump from a 60 hertz panel to 90 hertz panel it makes a huge difference and it feels faster but after 90 you can go to 120 or 144 still the feeling of difference is slightly lesser than 60 to 90 so you guessed it 90 hertz is a sweet spot next one is protection of the glass it's very important for the durability of the smartphone if you can buy a smartphone with gorilla glass protection or dragon trail protection it will be more durable so be mindful okay next one is battery capacity considering the battery capacity before buying a smartphone is seems like an obvious thing to do but most of the time people neglect it sometimes they have seen some attractive advertisements they really like the design or the manufacturer or they simply ignore the fact the battery capacity is way more important than design and looks of the phone. The problem with batteries are they degrade their capacity over time. So if you buy a phone with bigger battery capacity, it will serve you for several years without showing any major issues because the battery is bigger and it degrades slower. But let's say you bought a phone with smaller battery capacity. It will degrade quickly and it will show major battery issues sooner and also most battery manufacturers recommend replacing a smartphone battery after 300 to 500 charge cycles. Since you have to charge a small battery more frequently, battery life will be less compared to those bigger batteries. If you want to know how to prolong the battery life of your phone, I have done a video about that topic so I'll link it in the description and here, check that out. Next one is processor. Choosing the right processor for your smartphone is very important when you buy in one. Okay, so there are several mobile processor manufacturers like Apple and their A series chipsets, Qualcomm with the Snapdragon chipsets, Samsung with Exynos chipsets, Huawei with Kirin chipsets, and MediaTek chipsets. So, here's a quick guide on my opinions. Apple's chipsets are more powerful in terms of performance, efficiency, and overall, it's the best performing chipset compared to other manufacturers and it's only available in iPhones. In Android universe, Qualcomm chipsets are more reliable, powerful, energy efficient and has more capabilities. If you're looking to buy an Android phone, this is the best chipset compared to other Android chipset manufacturers. It's better to go from at least Snapdragon 600 series to flagship processors which are 800 series. Ok so Exynos, uh, Samsung put Exynos chipsets to their devices to cut the prices down but uh, they also sell same Snapdragon powered models to US. China, Japan and Latin American countries. The problem with Exynos versions are they are less reliable, less power efficient, throttles compared to Qualcomm versions so Exynos is good enough but not a great processor. Ok next one is Kirin processors from Huawei and these processors are somewhat reliable than Exynos processors and Huawei is doing a great job with their chipsets. So Kirin processors are better but still Snapdragon chipsets dominate the price to performance ratio. Ok finally we have MediaTek, MediaTek has some processors which are good but there are some poor performing processors too, especially in the lower end chipsets are very average compared to lower end Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors which are performing fine. Ok camera, when it comes to smartphone cameras there are lots of misconceptions and there are many things to consider in the camera department in a smartphone. First uh, you have to figure out are you going to use your smartphone camera for professional purposes or only for conventional usage scenarios. Because if you are concerned with professional purposes, your smartphone camera should be reliable, it should have the quality you are looking for and other camera features should work without an issue. For this purpose, you don't need a crazy number of megapixels. The megapixel count doesn't represent a good camera quality. It involves image processing, video stability, speed of the shutter, focusing, etc. A great example is Samsung S20 series. It's having an 108MP camera and 100x zoom capabilities but the overall camera experience was disappointing because it struggles to focus. Large aperture makes a paper thin plane of focus which resulted a weird bad looking bokeh effect when taking photos of a close up subject. So megapixel count it most of the time it doesn't matter. For professional purposes still the most reliable cameras are available in iPhones. They have better image processing, great dynamic range, good stabilization fast focusing and even better microphones for video recording. It's like you can use an iPhone camera without worrying about any issues. Ok for conventional use, all modern smartphone cameras are much capable and if you need to clarify how many megapixels you want, it's always better to have 12 to 21 megapixel cameras. And the front facing camera, if you want to record like 4K video, the sensor must have 8 plus megapixels. 
something to keep in your mind otherwise you will be fine with most smartphone cameras out there so you can ask me what about dual triple or even five cameras on the back of the phone this is tricky yes it gives you options like wide angle macro capabilities optical zoom or depth sensors the question is is it always better to have a bunch of cameras on the back of your phone yes but no most mid-range smartphones which have these crazy amounts of cameras most of the time they just do it somewhat poorly so it doesn't mean having a bunch of cameras on the back provides a very good camera experience good examples are Pixel 3a, iPhone 10R, iPhone SE 2020, they only have one camera but the quality and the performance was far better than most phones. But it also works well sometimes, let's say you want a wide shot or macro shot and BAM you have the option likewise. But it really depends on the implementation of the cameras. So don't fall for the numbers, seek for the real performance of a camera. Okay, next one is storage. So if you have dealt with the storage running out message on your phone, you know the struggle. In 2020, you should buy a smartphone with at least 64GB of internal storage. There are a bunch of reasons why storage space is becoming more and more important. So new apps are having lots of features which makes app size bigger. Old apps are also getting new updates with more features, so the same thing. Uh, new smartphones have sophisticated cameras, so photos and videos are very high quality, so it takes up space. New operating system versions also takes up some space more and more. And also, last but not least, it reduces performance of the device if the internal storage gets full. So when buying a smartphone, buy one with at least 64 gigs and speed storage drives which are like UFS 2.0, UFS 3.0, ultra fast drives. So other things you have to consider are like uh, RAM, build quality, privacy and reputation of the manufacturer. When you consider the amount of RAM you need, basically you need more than 2 gigabytes of RAM in 2020, that's the lowest. But iPhones manage RAM efficiently than Androids, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so next concern is the build quality. It's so critical because nowadays most smartphones are glass sandwiches and you know glass is glass and glass breaks. So it's better to buy a phone which has some type of protection like Gorilla Glass but still glass can break and it's always better to use a good quality case. Okay, pro tip, your smartphone should have a layer of protection between the display and the frame. As you can see, there is a soft plastic layer between the display and the glass. Fun fact, this helps the screen glass to transfer the shock energy of an impact to the safety layer so it can absorb some of the shock energy and help to save the display. If not, the impact from dropping your phone or in any case, the shock will absorb by the screen itself and it can easily break. Okay, so concerning about the privacy of your device is also very important because all your online activities are always with your phone and we should have the feeling of safety with our smartphones. Basically iPhones with iOS has more privacy than Android smartphones because iOS is not an open source operating system and it's more secure, more refined and harder to be rich. On the other hand, Android is open source and anyone can find the code, so it's easy to breach or seek for a security issue with the code. Because of that, iOS is more secure than Android but Android is also providing security patches to safeguard consumers from potential threats. Finally, the reputation of the company is also a key factor to consider because we can predict how reliable and trustworthy the company by evaluating their past performance. So that's it for today, hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like it would mean a lot and sub would be massively appreciated. This is Tech with Lucky and I will catch you in the next one.